Hey again, so it's me again. Oh, I just uh, just woken up from another dream. I don't know if it was prophetic. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. Um, <clears throat> Lord Jesus, Father God, I pray, uh, please be with me in this, Lord. If this dream was from you, then please help me to remember every single detail of it and bring it, put it across exactly how you want me to. If it wasn't from you, then uh, let the person watching this just forget about it. But I think I think it probably was from you. Um, okay, and I just saw the Holy Spirit light thing in my eyes, so I think, I think it may be. Hang on, just listening. Well, thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're with me right now. Yeah, I know the Lord's with me. I can see the light thing in my eyes. Mm, beautiful love. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord. All right, so I'm just going to share it. Um, it. It's a very, very short one. Basically, in my dream, I was with my wife, Hayley. And, uh, and the reason why I'm always with my wife is because that's how I know it, you know. If I was with one of your family members, it wouldn't make sense because I don't know your family. But for me to see it through my own eyes, I can relate to it, do you know what I mean? <coughs> so that answers someone else's question that they asked me the other day. Uh, I was with my wife Hayley and my brother Jamie, and Jamie, um, to me, he drinks alcohol and smokes drugs and does lots of drugs and lives in sin, and I, I worry about him so badly, he's like my greatest worry in my life, and uh, I'm always trying to drag him along even though he's living in sin, it's, it's just terrible, I really hope that he sorts it out, um, but anyway, uh, I'll put the phone in the cup as usual, um, me and Hayley, my my baby, my wifey, uh, we were we were on the run uh, in these end days, like you know, we were on the run, and I knew the Lord was guiding us and protecting us, and we were keeping very close to Him. So I guess this, I guess this video goes out for you who will be on the run, and a lot of us will be because you know where it says about not receiving the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, you can't buy or sell without it. Well, Christians, we will be on the run, you know. Ah, uh, oh, thank you, Lord. The, the Lord just spoke to me there. Um, he said to me, much like the Jews of the Holocaust, Holocaust, when the Jews, there were Jews on the run, and they fled, and they fleed, and they hide, hidden people's houses under the floors, and uh, and they were on the run. We will be the same. And I was in the kitchen just now, you know me, making the British cup of tea. It's got to be done. <laughs> Can't think without my tea. <laughs> anyway. Oh, especially with sugar and it's lovely. Mm. No, I'm sorry, I'm just messing with you. Um, so, <coughs> I was in the kitchen and I was thinking, is this a prophetic dream or was I just randomly dreaming this? What was it? The, the Lord... Uh, oh, crap, I've forgotten it. Um, what was it, Lord? Please, can you confirm that to me again? Please remind me, Lord. What just happened in the kitchen? I don't know, but I basically just got reminded uh, about this. Well, anyway, um, we were on the run, and uh, we came across... We were on push bikes. We couldn't use cars. I knew that in this dream just now that we couldn't use a car to get around with because they can track you and stuff. So you want to be... Yeah, I guess this is what this is, a preparing dream for, for us that will be on the run. Um... You want to avoid driving cars and doing anything that can be tracked. Um, and, ah, oh, the Lord, yeah, he's just saying the Lord will provide our every need. Um, he will look after us. He will guide us and direct us to the most safest of places. Much like the Jews in the Holocaust. Holocaust, like, you know, he did that for them as well, I believe. Those that knew him and truly seeked him, he's saying. Um, and he'll do the same for all his people. Yeah, he's definitely saying that. I and mean, he loves you so much. I feel his love right now for you. He loves you so much. Don't be afraid. You must stay close to the Lord. I'm listening while I'm saying this. You must stay close to, to me, he's saying. I, I will be your your guiding rod or your guiding staff. Does that make sense to you? Um, the rod. He, he will guide us. Humbly, servants. 
You must seek me and spend time with me. That's what the Lord's saying just now. Um, and I will meet with you. Thanks, Lord. And uh, in this dream, I had to be very careful about who I spoke to. And I ended up in this, this place. Me and Haley had like cycled like. I know it sounds crazy. Whoa, I just saw some an angel. Was that an angel? I hope that was an angel, not a demon, man. Sort of reflecting. Anyway, um, you got to be careful who you speak to. And we, we came across this this guy in the house, and we'd cycled thousands of miles. And I don't know how we knew it was thousands of miles, but it was. It, it was in the dream. And uh, <coughs> we were with my brother Jamie, and we're constantly trying to help him. Like, you know, and we came across this house with this bloke in, and he was like, I don't know what this is about. We don't have that in, in our country. But he was representing the area. A bit like a mayor type thing. Yeah, we have mayors over here. But he had more power than that in this small community um, of this town. I don't know. Do you... Again, it seemed... It appeared like we were in America. This this house was like American-looking kind of wooden house, like, you know, in the country. And this guy was very important. And I was, I was trying to speak to him and... and but at the same time, I had to be very wary of him. And I was clutching this. This may shock a lot of you, but it's nothing to worry about. I was clutching this. Now this is a Cameo C15 blowback. It's a gas-powered handgun. This is the power. CO2. Fires. Pellets. In my dream, I was holding on to that very dearly because that thing ultimately will protect me in these days coming along. Well, no, no, no. Obviously, the Lord will protect me, ultimately. But it, it will sure help. So it fires these little pellets, you see. And uh, it's semi-automatic. And it has 16 pellet clips in there, whatever you want to call them. On either side, but the other side's broken, so I need to get that sorted out. And uh, so that just clips in the bottom there. And you can take the bottom off and there you can see the gas in there and it screws in by the bottom there I'm gonna fire a couple of uh, pellet rounds off for you for you to see in the UK if you want to carry a firearm you need a license um, I think America is slightly different isn't it so you can just uh, get a firearm and buy it and off you go like you know but over here the best you can get is gas. Now, the thing is with these undays, uh, uh, one of these um, will act as a, uh, oh, what's the word? I can't think, I've just woken up. Um, it won't be, uh, well, basically, I can't think of the, oh, deterrent, that's the word. Um, if you're in a situation where somebody's trying to kill you or steal something off you, pull one of these out, face it at them, uh, they can't tell the difference between a real firearm. Well, they might, but they might not, you know. But it will act as a deterrent, like, you know. Do you know what I mean? And look, I'll show you. I've got to fire it. It's my garden. It's a bit of a mess. Me and my wife are, like, sorting it out at the moment. The thing is, I can't turn the camera around on here. But the safety and the fire uh, are the wrong way around. I need to get that sorted out fire it's on safe now so it's off safe let me just cock it so it's the it's the usual pull it back hang on so it's now primed and ready to fire and just listen i haven't fired it for a while so the gas cylinder might need replacing i can't um can't turn the camera around because i've got it facing this way but just watch Did you hear that and see that? Let's do it again. Wait a minute, it's not firing any pellets. Hang on a second. <coughs> right, I've run out of pellets on that side. Let me get a couple more. As you can hear, it's not a massive bang sound, but it is It's loud enough to scare someone off. So if somebody was trying to steal something off you or uh, trying to steal... You know, like someone was trying to steal something off you, or 
threaten your life, if you were to pull one of them out, it would act as a deterrent first of all. So, hopefully, by waving one of them around in their faces, it, it, will, it will scare them off slightly. I, I would recommend that you uh, definitely get one of these, or if you can, use a real firearm. Now, if you have to shoot somebody in these end days, then that's up to your discrepancy, like, you know. I personally, if I had to fire this at someone, I wouldn't aim to kill him, I'd just aim to disarm him, like, you know. So there we go, it's got some more pellets in there now. Now, it does automatically cock itself, so I don't need to keep pulling it back, but, you know. So just watch, look. So you can get quite a few pellets in there, like, you know. And it's got a good range on it as well. But um, I haven't fired that for a few months. Now obviously when you put a new gas cylinder in there, it, uh, it's more powerful. And do a lot more damage. I mean, if you were to shoot someone in the neck with it or the face, I think you could kill him with this. I honestly believe you could. If you shot him in the neck or the eye or something. Uh, I don't know if it's strong enough to penetrate your skull. I don't think it would be able to penetrate your skull. If you shot him in the eye or the neck, you could hit an artery there and you could kill him. I, I would strongly recommend that you get one of these um, because your very life may depend on it. If you're in a situation, like I say, someone's trying to steal something off you or kill you, pull this out and, and it could act as a deterrent and save your butt. <coughs> also have an air rifle, which is a 2-2. Uh, again, that's gas powered and fires, uh, these are 1-7s I think, pellets, but obviously the 2 is a 2-2 pellet, like, you know. Again, could save your life. I've got the rifle to shoot rabbits in game and stuff. Uh, they say it's not strong enough to kill a deer, but if you were close enough, I think you could kill a deer. Um, I've got rabbit traps and snares and all sorts of stuff to uh, capture animals. If you say that's cruelty, well, how are you going to eat? You know? So it, it's stuff like that, really. I was carrying that, I was clutching that in my, in my dream, and it deterred a lot of people away from me. I would strongly recommend you get one with a little holster. You know, I'm hoping that I won't have to use it much, but you may have to, you know. I'll tell you what, the difference between you having one of them and not having one of them could really make a real difference to you in these end days. Uh, if somebody was to, like I say, you're in a situation where they're trying to steal water off you or they're trying to kill you for water or food. If you ain't got one, they're going to take it. If you've got one of them and pull it out, they'll think twice about it. So it's stuff like this that you need to prepare before... The end day, well, before the major catastrophes and stuff start, do you know what I mean? Um, just, uh, just be careful. So I was very careful about who I spoke to in this dream, and me and my wife, we were going along by the Lord's leading, you know? I, I would recommend you get, like, a small little Bible, maybe smaller than that, carry that with you, carry little handguns and uh, rabbit traps and all sorts of stuff like that, and uh, just be prepared and be ready. I believe we're going to be off the grid. That's what the Lord said to me in the kitchen. Off the grid. Um, just be off the grid and try and survive off the land. Survive on what the Lord's given us. And you remember the Egyptians went around the desert for 40 years. And uh, the Lord gave them supernatural food from heaven. Manna. I, I believe the Lord will do the same thing for us. I, I mean, I totally believe it. Absolutely believe it. Of course. He, he will look after us, you know. He says he looks after the birds of the air. And aren't we much more important... I know the Lord will provide for us, but if we can prepare the best we can now, when our food runs out or whatever, I know the Lord will pre like look after us. Um, so for some of us, um, it won't be so bad. Some of us, we will be living off the grid. I mean, it would be a horrible way to live in a way, living out of caves and canyons and, and just walking all the time and uh, avoiding the enemy, like, you know, the the people that are trying to kill us and all the rest of it. Because the Bible verse sprung to my mind in the kitchen, which was, um, oh crap, please don't let me forget it again. Um, we, we will be handed over to all nations and hated by all nations for our Lord's namesake, Jesus' name. And that's in Matthew 24. We haven't reached that yet, but when that happens, that will be like the Jews. So us Christians will be hated by all nations and killed by all nations for the name of our Lord. Wow, just had a joke there in my hand. Um... So we'll be living off the grid, and I think for some of us it won't be too bad. I mean, it will be a much different lifestyle to what we know now, but we'll be okay. We'll avoid being hanged and shot and 
Um, we may go through some of the disasters, but I know the Lord will protect us. And I saw in the dream just now, it was kind of frightening, but it was much more peaceful than other dreams I've had. I knew that we'd be okay. Let me see that angel there again. Um, that's crazy. Well, it's not crazy, but it's, it's kind of... I don't see that all the time. And um, to be encouraged, like, you know... But unfortunately, many of us will face some of the things that I've shared already and other people have shared, uh, what the Bible says. But the aim is to make it to the rapture in one piece. Stay close to the Lord, keep listening to him, keep spending time with him, and he will speak to you, okay? Don't always rely on other people and keep asking other people to pray for you. You've got to learn to spend time with the Lord yourself. Because when you're in heaven, you're going to speak to him, like me and you are talking now. Well, I say me and you, it's me talking, isn't it? But like, if you were sitting in the same room as me, we'd be talking, wouldn't we? And like, and well, you leave comments and stuff, so... But when you're in heaven, you'll speak with the Lord and he will speak with you. So learn to listen to him now and ask him for help. Say, Lord, I really want to hear from you. Um, please speak to me and show me that it's you speaking to me, like, you know. And, and he really loves you. I believe he's going to give us peace to you, like, um, peace beyond understanding. Yeah, in these end days. Feel the peace now, man. Oh, I love the Lord, man. So beautiful. <clears throat> so I just wanted to share that with you, really. Be wary who you talk to. Stay off the grid. Don't do anything that will attract any attention to yourself. Uh, be very careful who you speak to. Completely rely upon the Lord. He will guide you. Um, what we need to do as Christians when we go off the grid is we need to stick together, bunch together, lots of us. Uh, we'll be safer in numbers. And just, just be on the run, like, you know. And I believe the furthest... The further away you can get from the cities, you know, I believe I'm really hearing this. The further you get away from the cities and the towns, the safer you will be. Or the, wait, well, no one will be predominantly, ultimately safe, but um, you'll be safer than what you would be in the cities. So you want to get well away from the cities and go right out into the countryside. And when you're out there, you'll be able to hear if someone's coming, like, you know. You, you may want to base it on like the army, set up a platoon harbour and have little sentries about the place and live in like little camps and stuff. And yeah, and the Lord is with us. He says, you're my people and he will look after us. Bunch together, if you are anywhere near anyone else on this comment section right here, right now, um, talk amongst each other and bunch together. And uh, when if you have any warning of something coming, uh, and you know it's intimate, meet up and head out, start survival basically, yeah, if there's anyone near me in the UK, I live in Somerset, please contact me, please contact me, it's very serious, please contact me, I have su survival gear upstairs uh, in my home, um, I have some food, I have some stuff stored away, uh, yeah, uh, give me a shout, um, either through here on the comments below or on Facebook. Uh, we'll start meeting up and we'll talk about what kind of survival gear we need and I will post videos on this to come soon. And um, we'll help each other the best we can and pray for each other and, and get ready. But we will be raptured, you know, just hold on to that. Hold on to the Lord and believe and claim the Bible promises out loud over yourself. We'll be okay as long as we keep close to Jesus. And but if we do face death for the Lord, then do it, you know, because you'll go to heaven. And I was thinking this earlier. I was thinking like, you know, um, if you're in a situation where you're faced with death or more torture, death is the better way to go because you'll go to heaven straight away. And uh, you know, normally most people think, oh no, I'm going to die. It's the worst possible result. Well, actually, for us Christians in these times ahead, death is actually the best way for us. It means going straight to heaven and bypassing all the rest of the crap, you know. Um, and then when the church is raptured, it says the dead will rise first and then the people that are still remaining. So you won't miss the rapture, you'll still be a part of it. But you'll rise first in your body and then it will be turned into a glorified body. Uh, but anyway, keep close to the Lord Jesus. He loves you guys so, 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 so much, man. He really loves you. He really senses peace and his love right now. He really, really, really loves you. Keep close to him. Trust him, okay? I know a lot of the messages that I've been giving out recently have been absolutely terrifying, you know. But you stay close to the Lord. He loves you, okay? 
and uh, he will protect us and guide us and keep us safe in these times. Pardon me. Okay, that's the um the end of the message. As always, pray about what I say, wear out with the Bible, seek the Lord's confirmation yourself, and use discernment. Alright, God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.